Now that we have some of the basics out of the way, we can move on to making more complex node networks. And this is where the difference between layer-based compositing and node-based compositing really becomes apparent. Just to save some time, I've already read in two pieces of footage. One is a still image of a canyon, the other is an image sequence that features a CG spaceship. So let's build a more complex network. Let me go ahead and connect the viewer to the canyon. Now one common task of compositing is to apply effects or filters to alter the image. So for example, I can blur this canyon. Now if there are no nodes selected in the node graph, and I make a new node, for example, I can go to Filter and Blur to the right mouse menu, that new node comes in by itself, it's not connected. There are actually several ways to make these connections between nodes. Of course, one is simply to click and drag a pipe and drop it on top of another node, like connecting the viewer. Now if you have a pre-existing connection line, for example, the viewer one pipe is connected to read one, I can simply click drag my new node and drop it on that current connection. Now before we go further, I want to talk about what these pipes mean. You can look at the pipes and see the arrowheads, and from that you can determine what direction information is flowing. So I can tell that information is flowing out of read one, through blur one, and down the viewer one. Now there's other ways to connect these together too. If I disconnect these pipes, click drag the ends and break them. I can also simply connect the inputs and outputs. For example, the blur node has an input pipe. I can tell it's an input pipe because it's flowing towards the node on the top here. The viewer also has an input pipe. Some nodes also have outputs. There's an output right here on blur one and an output pipe right here on read one. That means the information is flowing out of those nodes. So I can connect the input of blur one to the output of read one. In other words, grab the input pipe, drop it on read one, which means that read one is now sending information to blur one. I can also grab the output of blur one and drop it on viewer one, which means the input of viewer one is coming from blur one. There's a third way to do that, and that's if I disconnect these one more time, connect the viewer back up to canyon, and then select canyon. If a node is selected and I create a new filter, like blur, that's automatically inserted downstream. Now let me delete this other blur, I don't need it right now. So there's a little network. Now there's no blur happening right now, and one thing that happens with some of the filter nodes is they're off by default. But if I increase the size property on the blur, it becomes blurry. Another important task of compositing is combining multiple images or pieces of footage. Now in a layer-based system, you'd simply stack layers. The program like Nuke, you have to use a special node to merge inputs. Let's give that a try. I'm going to delete the blur node out. I'm going to bring in a merge node, and that's under merge, merge, or the M key. There's a merge node. The merge node has an A and B input plus an output. You can relate this to layer-based compositing by thinking of the B input as the lower layer. You can think of the A input as the upper layer. So what you can do is connect the viewer to the output of the merge one, in this case, connect the B to the canyon, and connect the A to the spaceship. If I zoom in, I can see my spaceship is now composited over the top of my canyon. Now the reason that works is there's alpha transparency around the spaceship. This is rendered in Maya. Nuke automatically recognizes the alpha channel, so this black is converted to transparency. You can tell that Nuke has recognized the alpha because there's a little white line right here. That's right beside the red, green, and blue lines. These are channel lines. So here it recognizes the RGB plus alpha, whereas over on the canyon it just sees RGB. In any case, there's your basic merge. Now, there's a few things to know about the merge that are useful. One is you can have more than one A input. In fact, as soon as you connect A, the A2 appears on the left. If you connect A2, then you'll have A3 and so on. The highest A number is equivalent to the highest layer. So A3 is on top of A2 and so on, with B on the very bottom. Now, there is a mask input on the right side. However, we'll talk about that later on when we get to rotoscoping. The merge node also has a mix slider at the very bottom here. The mix slider controls the influence of the A input. If I reduce that, A starts to fade out. Another important aspect of the merge node is the operation up here at the top. Now the layer-based program, you might have something like a blending mode. Now blending mode determines how the upper layers combine with the lower layers, some type of mathematical formula. 
In NuGet's operation, and that defaults to over. Over is similar to normal inside After Effects. You can change this menu though to other styles. For example, plus. Plus adds A and B together. In this case, that gives me a semi-transparent brighter result in that area. I'll return that to over for now. If you're curious what all these operations do, let your mouse hover over the menu. And you'll see all the mathematical formulas for all the different operations. In this case, a capital A and B represents the RGB values of the A inputs and the B input, whereas the lowercase a and b indicate the alpha values of a and b inputs. One last thing to keep in mind is, if you are working with CG renders, you might be concerned with pre-multiplication. For example, Maya pre-multiplies automatically, and that affects the quality of the alpha edges. If you want to interpret something as pre-multiplied, open up the read node, and there's a pre-multiply checkbox right here. You can click that on. We've now created a more complex network. We've also merged together two inputs. Now we're ready to move on to working with transforms, and we'll do that in the next video.